our prayer of illumination today. Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit, that as the scriptures are read and your word proclaimed, we may hear with joy what you say to us. Amen. Amen. And our scripture for today, like I said, is taken from Paul's letter to the Philippians, chapter 4, verses 4 through 9, and it's entitled, Exhortations. <clears throat> rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. Let all your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put it into practice, and the God of peace will be with you. Verses four, let's see, actually it's really six. Six and seven are the most inspiring verses in the Bible. If you Google the scripture that is the most read and the most admired and the most memorized, it is that. So I'm going to read it again. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. That scripture just about sums it up, doesn't it? And in our world today, as Marguerite said, and I'm sure we all know, whenever you put on the news the last week, you really need to rejoice, don't you? You need to have faith. You need to remember what you believe because the news is so terrible, so disheartening. When you hear what has been going on in our world, you feel like, let's turn it off. I can't take it anymore. And I know people who do that. And sometimes I'm tempted to do that too. I'll be honest, it's difficult. But I like to know what's going on in the world. I like to be current as much as I can. So when people say things to me, I wanna know what's going on. But immediately, what do you think of when you hear the news? The first thing I think of is, boy, we need to pray. Because how do you not be anxious at a time like that? It's frightening. It's frightening. Now, this scripture is the lectionary for today, which I try to do every week. So I selected this scripture, oh, over a month ago. But isn't it something how God makes each week timely? And I don't think that's accidental. Because when I looked last, last Sunday, after I finished the service, I looked to the next week to see what I'm going to be preaching on. And when I saw it was this scripture, I said, wow, I couldn't have picked a better one, could I? Because how many of us are anxious? So what do we do? Paul tells us right here, prayer and petition with thanksgiving. So even in the midst of all that's going on, when we pray, we have to pray with thanks. And that's difficult too, isn't it? 
Because it's hard to give thanks when you consider the circumstances. But we have to remember, there is always hope. There is always a reason to rejoice in the Lord. I can think of a few right now. Lynn coming back. Jack's doing a little bit better. He progresses, right? People, yes, people pass away. But yet we know where they're going, don't we? We know they're going to be with the Lord. So still, we can rejoice, even in the midst of that. We see people whose lives are transformed. We see people who find the Lord. We see people who recover from mental illness. We see people who kick a bad habit that they have. And these things give us hope and a reason to rejoice. Even in the midst of something terrible, there is still a reason to rejoice. We wake up every morning. Let's start right there. We're able to pray and get out of bed and move on and do good things for the Lord aren't we? And so those are the things that we have to rejoice in. There's always, always a hopeful thing in life. Betty is doing well. She's looking forward to doing the wedding. These are the things that drive us on with hope. And so we get up out of bed and get dressed and get ready and do what we need to do to make our little section of the world the best we can. And we pray, and we give thanks. And what happens when we do that? The peace of God, the peace of God comes to us. And it transcends all understanding. And this is something that, uh, oh, I, I just am so moved by this. Imagine peace that is beyond what we can understand. Such a peace. You know those moments in your life when you just feel peaceful? For me, it's looking at the ocean, looking at the sky, seeing the clouds. Those things to me, I just stop and I say, can you deny that God exists when you see what God has created? Just by looking at those things, you know there is a God. You just know it. And those are the moments that give me peace. And I say to myself, but imagine a peace that goes beyond what I understand as a peace. We have our perception of what peace is, but imagine what God feels peace is. I mean, we're probably here and he's probably here. So imagine a feeling of peace that goes beyond what we could ever imagine. Wow. Wow, I want to know that peace one day. Don't you? It's amazing. A peace that we can't even understand. Unbelievable. And that's why I say that so much because it's overwhelming to think about, isn't it? So to me, oh, I love that part. I just absolutely love it. Peace that goes beyond what we could imagine. <coughs> oh, I long for that day. And then Paul says, all of you, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about those things. Keep your mind focused on those good things. You know what they are. You see good things too, don't you? People who are good and kind and gentle. People who are thoughtful, considerate and compassionate. Look amongst yourselves. How many of you fit that bill, don't you? You know it, you can feel it. Think on those things. Those are the things that we need to remember. And then he says, whatever you've learned from me, whatever, 
or received or heard from me. Put it into practice. And what have you seen from God? Peace, kindness, goodness, things that are right and perfect and kind. Remember those things and do them. Don't just say it, do it. The other day I got a card in the mail and it was a, from a friend of mine who loves Halloween. So when the card came, I said, wow, she sent me a Halloween card already. So I opened it up expecting to find a pumpkin or something like that. Instead, she wrote me a note and it was so touching. She wrote about, and I'm gonna start crying. She wrote about how much it means to me that I talk to her when she's had some problems in her life and how I've been comforting to her and how I've helped her through difficult times just by listening, really. And she said, God knew who to give this gift to. And I, I just sat there crying because I was expecting a Halloween card and it, instead it was something like that. And she wrote on the bottom, you're all the good that there is. And I don't believe I am, but boy, it was nice to see that. And it made me feel so good. So when we think about what we can do for somebody, just writing a card. You know, it doesn't take much to go and get a card and send it to somebody and say something kind. And boy, oh boy, can that turn your day around too. So it's those small things in life, those little details that can make a difference. Things that are pure and lovely and admirable and kind and gentle. All the words that we love, aren't they? But yet, the one that's most important is love. Because love comes from God. And he passed that on to us, his dear children, that he loves more than you can imagine. And with that, his peace that we will never be able to understand. It goes beyond our minds. And one day, we'll know that peace, and what a blessing that will be. Amen.